Uh, we started in 2018. Um, the initial goal was just to make some shirts that were different from everybody else out there. Um, it was started April 18th, which is my partner's badge number that was killed in the line of duty. Um, and the business quickly became a coping mechanism for me. And what I learned was sharing the experiences that I was dealing with my administration and some of the problems within the canine community was that I was relating to a whole lot of other people that were dealing with the exact same issues. So it quickly became kind of just a small company to grow into a brand and more of a family of other handlers dealing with a lot of the same issues as me. I became a cop in 2012. Um, before that, I was in the military. I was not a dog handler in the military. I was a cab scout, um, two deployments to Iraq. Um, when I got out, I wanted to continue the service. Um, but more importantly, I know there's a, it's the cliche thing to say, you know, I want to be a cop and I want to serve and protect and whatnot. My number one goal is to hunt evil. Like, I, I believe that that's, I believe there's a dying breed of people out there truly wanting to hunt. And I believe that that's my calling. Um, that's what brought me into law enforcement. I truly want to go after the worst of the worst. People that prey on innocent people. Um, and that's what my passion's for, is going after them. Um, one of my training officers was a canine handler. So I got a real quick introduction into working dogs, being a decoy, laying tracks for him, but most importantly, responding all the high priority calls, you know, the robberies, the violent crime, things like that. So that's where I immediately was like, that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I wanna be a part of. Um, once I put my time in on the street, it was approximately five years in on patrol and I tested for it and uh, was selected for it. And that's when I got my first canine partner. So I'm called Worthless Handler and a lot of people ask, where's it come from, why worthless? Because some people even take it as an insult uh, immediately. And it's two folds. One is we are the worthless handler, we're the worthless end of the leash. I was, always, I was told quickly on that if our dogs had thumbs, they'd drive and they wouldn't need us. They'd go to their own calls. The other half is I quickly learned in canine, it's almost like we're the redheaded stepkid. Um, we have limited funding, we have limited support, limited equipment, and it almost feels like we're being treated worthless. So it's kind of, um, we're going to take that persona of you being, of us being called worthless, and we're just going to use it to our advantage and take pride in it. And then the other half was, we're the worthless side of the leash. You know, we're just tagging along, hanging on, letting our dogs work. How do you come up with your idea, especially like, you know, like the trainer die or like don't pet on me and like those kind of things? Yeah, um, most of the ideas just come from the dark pits of my brain. Like I just think of something funny or I see something that I already love, you know, join or die. Um, the don't tread on me because obviously I'm I'm a red blooded American. So I look at those things and I see of how I can incorporate them into um, the brand, um, just like join or die. I just changed the snake out into a leash and put train or die because I believe, you know, that training is, a, is where we're going to be successful on the street is, is dependent on how much we put into our training. So that's kind of where that one came from. So talk about your Instagram posts because um, okay. you do a lot of informational stuff. Yep. Um, and where did that come from? Okay. Um, so with all my social media, Instagram, Facebook, I try to give out content that's going to help somebody else. So whether it's Medical Mondays with Den Mother or Evan Nolt or Saturday Setups where I talk about equipment, which features a lot of Ray Allen, um, as well as, you know, training days, uh, working dog Wednesdays, things like that. Um, I just try to post content that's going to help somebody in some way, whether it's equipment related, training related, or just morale related and make people smile and kind of forget about the filth that we deal with on the job. Um, I don't care if I don't sell another product for the rest of my days. Um, meeting people, hearing their stories, whether it's seizures, apprehensions, or just that like a post, just they saw a post and they're like, dude, I just went through that at my agency. I completely understand. Thank you for doing that. Or an equipment post of, you know, I just got a new Ray Allen harness. This is what I think um, should be the end all be all of harnesses, et cetera, et cetera. And that relates to somebody else and it might help somebody else. So I didn't expect it to grow up, but I, I'm like I said, I'm just completely humbled and kind of blown away by it, to be honest. Um, how uh, so you're a cop? Yes. Um, how is uh, how is equipment um, necessary in your field? Uh, I think it's absolutely essential for success. 
being able to depend on my collars, my harnesses, my leashes, um, knowing that I'm not gonna have that failure on the street is, is uh, absolutely essential. I recently got a new canine partner. His name is Canine Bolo. He was generously donated by Canines of Valor. Um, and he came from Paysetter Canine in Texas. He's an amazing partner. Um, while I can't go into detail, he's already saved my life on the street. Awesome. Um, what equipment do you use with him? With Canine Bolo, I run uh, an Icon harness. I run his the Ram collar, all of my leashes, my long lines, my waist lead, my six footer, uh, literally everything is Ray Allen. You can find me at worthlesshandler.com. You can find me on Facebook, just Worthless Handler, and then Instagram, Worthless Handler. Oh, <laughs>